This video is to go over the process of how to fire a scut manual kill. A couple things you need to realize is I have the switches in the off setting. That's always a good thing to have happen because when I press this button to turn it on, I don't want to stress out the relays. It's like, you know, at home when you're unplugging things, power goes out, you gotta make sure you unplug things. You don't send jolts of whatever into this kill and make sure relays last longer. So you wanna do that for sure. So this SCUT 1027 is a manual and I got three switches. They control different levels of inside the kiln. You have a timer here, which is like a backup thing. So that if this cone doesn't work, which we set inside of it, <coughs> it doesn't work. This kind of helps make sure it shuts off if this doesn't drop. So have a backup. So I always set it as close as I can to what the kiln's supposed to be fired to. Here's what we do there. Okay. So this is the process. The first thing you're gonna do is hit the button to turn it on. It might take a little bit of sticking. You might have to press it in there, but then this light should turn on here. The first thing I do when I start is I turn each knob to low. Then I'll come back in a few hours and hit them to medium, a few more hours, and then go to high. When you're doing a bis fire, you want to let it go about two to three hours in between each time you turn the knob. If you're doing a glaze fire, you can go about an hour, hour and a half. It's a little bit short over time. I'm showing you pretty much talking about this firing because the mass majority of you were taking dry pieces of clay like this and making it into actual pottery. So we'll go through that process with you and you gotta make sure they're gonna last, things are gonna explode, all that stuff as well. So this kind of helps out with that a little bit. Also, at this time when you do start the kiln, if you have a vent overhead that you can turn on, that's when you wanna turn this on as well. Once you turn this on, you wanna turn the vent on. I'm gonna turn the vent on here because I'm just doing a demonstration and also I'm not gonna get it up to 1800 degrees. And also you'll be able to hear my voice, with that wonderful fan going off. So I'm gonna let it sit, come back in a couple hours and then we'll do this again. Two hours later. Here I am back. It's been sitting for a couple hours with the stuff that's in there. It's now time to turn these knobs all to medium. Again, let it sit a couple hours, come back, get the timer going, kiln's going. When it gets probably up in this stage here to medium, you really don't want to touch the outside of this kiln at all because it will begin to get hot. So that's what happens, especially for some of you have your kilns outdoors, it will go hot. That's part of the reason why I always tell people as well, when you do this firing process, fire process, let your admin know and also your janitorial staff know. So if the alarm does go off, it will let them know. I have no idea why they put these alarms right by these kilns, but I think it makes it safer but these alarms pick up on heat, not actual fire. So it always goes off. So just let them know so they have information there. If you have a fan that you can put in the corner if your room is big enough, in your small little storage area, I highly recommend put a fan on low. That helps keep the air pushing it out, also up into the ventilation system. So again, I'm gonna come back in a couple hours and do this kiln on high. Two hours later. Here I am at the end of my day. Kiln's been firing, a couple more hours in. In between my classes, I come out and I turn this up to high. You'll hear the kiln begin to crank up more. Those elements really start to push heat out and this will burn up the, the burn up in the kiln, get it really super hot. The insulation was really important in these kilns. The coils just build up heat over time. It's a steady heat buildup. The insulation in this kiln keeps the heat going very well. So that's what's happening there. Now I let this sit until it shuts off. Either this will turn off or this cone will drop when it reaches temperature. And that's pretty much with the fire. I also recommend when you're done firing your kiln, you let it sit about 24 hours before you unload it. That makes sure everything is properly cool and ready to go. Good luck on your firing and may the process go really easy for you. And again, if you have a scut, I'll tell you this right now, call and ask scut questions. They will answer them for you, all right? Good luck this year and firing your kiln at your school.